Hello, Marilee. How are you? I'm doing great, Ileana. Thank you so much. This will should be lots of fun. Yeah, so today we're we're going with a free flow and we're going to explore several different topics. Uh, would you like to explain what we're doing a little bit of? Well, um, Ileana is offering to uh, introduce me to two other aspects of myself. And I'm very excited about that. And um, one is named Emerus and the other is Ninara. And mm -hmm. we also might have Source Creator, Ileana come through, whatever works. And I'm just excited about being introduced to them. I've been told a little bit, have a couple questions about them and we'll have continuing questions later uh, that will be more relevant to all of you, probably. Sounds good. And this is free flow. So we're just going with an interesting conversation. But now Ninara can be channeled so she can come in directly. And Amiras is telepathic. So she does not do channeling, but she comes in through telepathic communication. So Marilee can ask both of them any questions and source creator is direct channeling as always and very neutral and very different kind of um, personality set. So there might be some differences between the three beings here in how they talk and how they express themselves. So just so our viewers can know that um, voices might be different and inflection might be different because the beings are not all the same. They're different densities, dimensions, and even different creator types. Ooh. <laughs> awesome. awesome okay so let's start with Ninara mm -hmm. and who I understand is an eight dimensional goddess of the golden lion pillars and so she's an aspect of me and I would like to ask her if she can tell me a little bit about her job and what that involves Sure. So she's going to be channeled directly. So she'll come in very quickly in. And she is a golden goddess of the golden lion pillars of light, eight dimension, like you said, just so people understand who she is. And she was at one point on earth and you can ask her whatever you would like. So she's just coming in. Hello, Marilee. Hello, Nanara. <laughs> it's wonderful to talk to another aspect of myself. Thank you for all you do that I'm unconscious of down here on earth. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful pleasure to meet you, blessed, beloved Marilee. How are you, my dear? I'm very good. This will be exciting. So I know that you and Ileana have already had an introduction. And I would like to introduce you to others about the importance of the pillars of light, what that involves, and you go from there. Feel free to tell us. Sure. So the pillars of the golden light frequency, they are to protect the planets and the crystalline cores. As you and Ileana had already participated in something very important. You had disclosed that your universe, your known universe had been upgraded and reset, reset recently. So these pillars of light, they're part of that ancient harmonic shift that happened on earth 26,000 years ago. And this is when I was on earth with those spiraling lion golden pillars of what you have seen, what you looked like as me 26,000 years ago. And of course, total skin complexion is different. This is African-American. I would look African-American in that lifetime. Hence, my skin color was different. It was golden brown, just so people know what I looked like for just a comparison. And I came from the eighth dimension, as in what I am in right now. I can came down to earth 
for about, I would say, one year of your Earth years after Atlantis fell and Earth went from 6D density to 3D, the energies were different. It was a lower frequency and humans needed more light and the core of the planet needed more light. So the pillars were energetic, energetically transported here and they're four-sided. So imagine seeing these golden line pillars with a spiral in the middle, four of them combined together. It was transported from the eighth dimension by me. I am capable of opening portals and transporting these pillars to the earth. And they were set up in sequences of four around the ley lines. So in total, there was 20 of these pillars. They were set up to anchor the crystalline core of the earth so that it would be stable and hold the crystalline frequency, even though you went from 6D to 3D, these pillars anchored that 3D energy and raised the light quotient. So it felt like being 3D, 4D. So the planetary core did not blow up. That was my main function coming in 26,000 years ago. And I'm an aspect of you. I'm a celestial cosmic teacher who guides star seeds and other people who are completing their purposes and missions on earth at this time to assist the light. Mm -hmm. Very fascinating. And this was because after the Atlantis, it was really a compromise, the whole earth core from what happened, correct? So you yes. can stabilize it. Yes, I came to stabilize it. So the core of the crystalline matrix inside the planet would not explode. I also aligned the orbit of the planet in a stable orbit, so it's not wobbly, so you wouldn't have uh, more earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes erupting, or any type of weather overheating, or any explosions, you know, like fires coming from the ground, sinkholes, that type of thing, to make sure all of the weather was stabilized with those pillars. Hmm. Now, did you do this so to speak by yourself as a creator celestial being or did and or did you also have a whole team helping you i was here by myself i am a celestial creator being so i can come down from a higher dimensional density frequency to a lower density frequency like your 3d realm on earth and I can literally work with the environment, work with the frequencies, the planetary core to reset what is out of balance, to have it in balance again, to ground the earth, to sing to the earth through the spiral energy coming from these golden line pillars. And I, I would literally go to each pillar, touch it, and the energy would activate the golden line energy in the spiral. The spiral spins clockwise within these pillars. So I would portal to each of the pillars that I had set up on the ley lines. And again, it took actually 20 pillars to complete this project 26,000 years ago. And I went to, to every one of them and activated them. And they were here on earth for a year as I was. Nobody would see me, though. I was invisible to humans because, again, me, me as a celestial being, I don't interfere with the human beings on the planet themselves. I only guide and teach those people that need help. But people don't see me on a regular basis walking around on the planet. So that would not interfere with their free will and their evolution on this planet. You, of course, read my next two questions I had for you, being telepathically connected. Are you able at this time to tell us the locations or some of the locations of those 20 pyramids? Was it like the Giza Plateau and other key nexus points? or? So the pillars were not like any of these pyramids, like on the Giza Plateau. These pillars were large, and they look like what you would see, like a pillars, literal pillars 
but they glowed golden frequency, the golden ratio spiral, if you will, like the fee. What your pyramids had as gold triangle capstones at the top, that is what these pillars embody, the golden ratio frequency. Because at one point, those Giza pyramids, they did have those golden capstones that also raised the light quotient on your planet, and they were made of gold to work with the ley lines. These pillars, they weren't anywhere near Egypt. They were literally on the ley lines that formed that five path star frequency energy that you see now that was upgraded and activated during your harmonic shift resonance convergence that happened on your human date of June 18th, 2023. So those pillars would have been on the ley lines. Each continent had about four pillars on it and a little bit more within certain ley lines. So Peru had these pillars. We would say, what is now Mexico had these pillars? What is British Columbia had those pillars? Hawaii and the major ley line frequencies. Where the ley lines were, these pillars were. Because they had to be a certain harmonic set frequency to align to that five path star energy. That's what the core of your planet looks like with the five corners with you know how some some of your human shamans they do the prayer circle to the five corners so the pillars were doing similar things creating that five path star frequency that's what that originated from from these pillars to align the planetary core system interesting yes yeah, some of the shamans and uh Others often use the four directions. They use the elements when they do that. And in sacred geometry, excuse me, in sacred geometry for you, what is the five star symbolized since that showed up in the uh, Schumann resonance vectoring that Ileana did mathematically? So that five star path symbolizes literally going into a higher density of evolution for the planet and for the beings on the planet. And for this universe, of course, because it reappeared again, fully formed. It showed in the mathematical vectoring that she did. And I was working with her on that. So it symbolizes the highest evolution of the light quotient that you're reaching right now, because this upgrade is being felt by humans. This five star path is being felt in your holographic existence, you connecting to the holo holographic universe, you connecting more with your physicality, your crystalline, your diamond DNA codes within the body, but that you're feeling it physically. Some people are feeling more light. Some people are feeling more energized. They get more creative ideas coming in. They're creating and manifesting things that they normally wouldn't even think about doing, upgrading themselves on the light spectrum with that golden spiral. So the pillars in the eighth dimension are fully activated now with this harmonic shift and upgrade in universe reset. Those pillars helped to do that reset and fully activate that five path star. Lovely. Now, I don't know if you're permitted to mention, but I'm interested in the skill set you have. Obviously, that is a huge skill set in the uh, coming from the eighth density. Do you prefer generally to work alone? I don't always work alone. Again, I'm a celestial teacher, so I will work with the star seeds from Earth and other planets to make sure the light quotient on all these planets as of the utmost highest vibration for all of your soul evolutions and physical evolutions, DNA, light code upgrades, inspiration for creativity to manifest beautiful things in your reality of a positive nature. So I also guide and inspire. If somebody feels stuck, I often give them inspiration and ideas that can help them move 
from being unstuck on the path journey of manifesting their highest purpose or mission when they incarnate to a planet or even celestial existences. Because with this upgrade, you now have access to travel in many places in the multiverse and other universes through steady portals that were created through that five-star path connection and vibration and the pillars activating that. Wahoo! That's a big deal. And, uh, of course, someone shouldn't be portaling unless they know what they do, what they're doing, right? Because of lower astral levels or other things going on. Yes, for the portaling, there's different ways of creating these portals with these golden line pillars of light. They've created stable portals. So I portaled Ileana to several places that she needed to see and understand because Egypt, you had asked what role the, the Giza Plateau pyramids play. Uh, they hold ancient knowledge connected to the Egyptian Atlantean arc ship and to the Egyptian Atlantean hall of records underneath the Giza Plateau pyramids. So I portaled Ileana to see the sacred geometry there and the golden ratio energies because it's the phi energy that the pyramids still emit and that also raises the light frequency of the planet and the beings. So when somebody goes to Egypt and they visit these pyramids, they always have a spiritual enlightenment experience where they're enlightened to their highest consciousness connection of their soul vibration, connected to their highest self, highest intuitive abilities to expand their soul consciousness, to evolve, to evolve, to manifest their highest well-being, highest good healing, to help themselves on their path, soul missions, purposes in life to accomplish what they need successfully on earth. So those pyramids act activate their highest light within their golden spiral, if you will. As a as visiting many sacred sites. So I'm very interested in what you are saying that uh, since you've done those pillars of light from the Atlantean time, and since we've moved into a five star sacred geometry, what frequency could we call that at? And how does that influence humanity on earth? And what is Earth stabilizing at frequency rise right now? So I would say that this has always been an eighth dimensional frequency from the pillars of light. The Earth feels it at sixth density vibration. Humans feel it at fifth density vibration but their bodies feel it at 3.5 to fourth density. And for some, it has felt a little uncomfortable and weird because it's a newer, higher vibration. So they seek to know why this happens, why they feel, you know, aches and pains or something in their bodies shifting and moving forwards, higher energy. That's what they're feeling. And for some, it feels like they're sick or they're, they don't know what to do with the new energy. So the pillars of light, you can literally meditate to the pillars of light and set up a frequency saying, please adjust my body to feel healthy, to feel light, to feel balanced and grounded with the pillars of light. I am in my I am presence to be doing this. I'm asking to connect to the light form, light bridge of my light body, to connect within to myself and activate my pillars of light, wisdom for healing, well-being, being grounded and balanced. And even that little mantra can help humans to balance that extra light coming into their bodies because it's not an illness, it's not a sickness, it's not a disease. It is just a higher vibration of light frequency going up and down within your body, that clockwise spiral of golden light. It's coming down from that upgrade of the universe and the pillars from the eighth density, from the eighth density of existence in 
my world, that higher celestial world, and you're all feeling it, feeling it in your own ways, how it impacts you and affects you. It, every person is unique on your planet, so it might affect you differently. Some feel energized, some feel creative, manifesting everything they've ever wanted. Others, it takes them a bit more to adjust to the frequencies to get comfortable. So the, these pillars of light, that little mantra can help balance and ground you to your highest well-being and balance, if you will. So you've mentioned pillars in plural, and you mentioned there's up to 20 you put on Earth. But for the purposes of assuming we make this public for the audience, for the purposes of that, what should they be visualizing? Just in the middle, touching, connected to one golden pyramid going all the way up? What would be the best for people to do? Well, it's a, it's literally a golden spiral of light going clockwise, spinning clockwise, and it's your highest bridge of light field. So you're taking your own light field and you're connecting to your pillar of light, which is the golden frequency. Everybody can access this pillar of light. It is your tool for balance and grounding. Um, the pillars of light, the golden lion ones that, that I had put on earth, the 20 ones, they're huge. Your pillar of light can be as wide as you want or as narrow as you want, but you're allowing yourself to step into it, visualizing yourself stepping into it and being healed, grounded, and balanced by the golden spiral that's going clockwise for connecting to your highest soul, to your physicality. So these pillars, your pillar of light, and you can have one or two or three or four, you can build them literally around yourself. They're activating your highest body, your highest soul capacity for healing, rejuvenating, grounding, and balancing so you don't feel overwhelmed by these new beautiful energies coming into your body, activating your crystalline frequency and your diamond codes. So you're going beyond two-stranded DNA, more like four or five, and people are feeling this. So these pillars of your spiral pillar of golden light grounds you and balances and heals this energy so you don't feel overwhelmed by it anymore. That's a beautiful tool for people to have. And you have probably, you as me, and me as you, um, I'm very into golden lions and spiraling energy clockwise. So I must have gotten a little bit from you <laughs> during sleep time or something else. Um, okay, so that's very useful. Now, a question arises for me around that is, do we need to do anything to restabilize it, to reinvest our energy into it? Or once we set it up, is that a permanent thing for people? Well, you would want to do this mantra every couple of days or every day, depending how you feel energetically, because this pillar of the golden spiral light, you you want to reconnect to it every couple of days or every day, de depending on how you feel. And again, every person is unique. Uh, they might want to do that mantra every day. They might want to do it every couple of days, depending on how they feel in their body and their soul and the light frequency, how well it's going up and down in that flow, the light field bridge flow, the spiral, it balances and grounds that. Imagine it as your kundalini rising. It's even above that. So it grounds and balances that. The pillar of light does that for your body and soul and for that kundalini energy. So again, every person is different. For one person, it might be every couple of days to do this mantra for somebody every day. And it can also be used to put protection in for your home, your environment, your land. You can create huge light pillars of golden frequency and you mix it with blue and white light rays. And you say, I put this pillar of light with this energy frequency of these rays to protect my home, to protect my land, to protect myself and protect everybody who is with me and my soul tribe family. Mm. for the highest good and highest protection of all. That's very good. And should you position them in the corners of homes or 
it doesn't matter wherever you feel, but equal, equal distance. Yes, equal distance, equal distribution, and that you feel comfortable with that energy of how you position the pillars. Again, they could be as expanded if you want or narrower, depending what you feel comfortable with. Now, does having these golden spiral lion pillars of light, do they automatically remove blockages interfering with uh, anyone's soul evolution or physical evolution? If, if you put in your mantra that you would like the pillars to lift and remove blockages, negative energy, negative energies from your source field, from your soul and physicality, they will, but you're programming them to do so. Imagine if you had a crystal in your hand, you would put specialized programming to remove all negative thoughts, to remove negative energies and blockages from the body and create a beautiful, positive spinning energy flow going up and down. You program that exactly into the pillars of light as well, because it's an energy state. The pillars are an energy state for you to work with. It's your own light pillar because you're connected deeply to it and you embody some of your frequency in it when you're in it. So it could be, usually they're, they're like this, pillars of light, literal light. They're not really pyramids. So they go like this as a light bridge okay. up and down the golden energy spins clockwise. Well, thank you for clarifying that because when you first were talking about the pillars you uh, situated here, post Atlantis, uh, they you said they had four sides. So it's easier for me to picture these pillars as kind of more circular swirling uh, mm -hmm. energy. So thank you for clarifying that. And um, if we were to visualize and we want to seed that pillar, so we're, we're we, I actually kind of visualize myself standing within it. <laughs> and and should we be projecting it down into the earth at all? And as it goes all the way up to the eighth uh, dimension or density, whatever word you want to use, does it go towards the great central sun? Like what visual can we use in terms of where it's, you know, going to? Yes, of course you want to project it into the earth because when it comes from the eighth dimension, definitely project it into the earth, project it onto yourself, onto yourself because you could be standing in it, sitting in it, meditating in it, and it could go as high as you want. If you want to take it to the central sun, you can. Again, it's you working with the energy of the golden spiral within the pillar to take it as high as you want and as far as you want, but definitely project it towards yourself and the earth because it also helps the earth to ground and balance and to keep the planetary core stable. That is so useful. Thank you for that tool. And I think we might make that public for the benefit of all. Uh, and um, so you obviously are a teacher. I come from a lineage of teachers. My mother's a teacher and uh, I, I aspire to being a more gracious teacher. So um, what, how can I utilize the higher frequency aspects of myself, such as you, and bring that down to assist for the benefit of all? What recommendations would you have? You have physical tools around you that you have already acquired a long time ago. Your, your teaching is about uplifting people to be at their highest light, their highest good, to walk their highest path of the sole purpose, divine mission, finding out who they are. This is what your work teaches people to do. And your mission is to walk your highest path as well by connecting to different healing modalities. You have been very honored to learn some of the great work of a celestial master called Marcel Vogel. Those teachings have always been with you and you always have aspired to teach others that wisdom as you're ready to come forward with it. 
So you have that teaching material and you have some of the vocals to work with. So invite some people in to experience vocal healing through you and also teaching. The teaching you can do even now remotely, that does not have to be done in person. It's the healing that has to be done in person, but the vocals to clear their energy. And it's like a spiral. It's like a pil pillar spiral, spiral of energy. So it is like that pillar of spiraling energy, even with the vocals going up and down, except it is white energy. But you can put golden frequency in it as well. You can add those frequencies. It's also a pillar of light which Mr. Vogel did not quite elucidate to, but that is a pillar of light energy going up and down like this. And the breath work strengthens it. In the pillars of light, you also breathe in and out. You breathe in to clear any blockages, any negative energies, and you breathe them out. Yeah. You clear them from your soul field and physicality. Same with the Marcel Vogel, you breathe in and out. So pillars of light are connected to those vocal healings. And oh, the, okay. yes. So it's like second nature to me. And this is one of the vocal crystals, but I haven't used it at all, but I have one of two. Um, so you're saying do it with my clients in person as a form of maybe psychic surgery or something uh, after I finished learning all that Vogel had to teach. Um, and then also you can do it long distance. Well, you can teach them how the technique uh, works long like distance. Like on one-on-ones or, or, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. But the healing has to be done in person because there has to be two of you. You are facilitating the healing and they are receiving the healing with the vocal creating that spiral pillar of light. And you do this through your intent, through strong intent, breath, and uh, mantra and purity work. Correct? Yes, yes. Mr. Vogel set up the technique itself, how to do it, but you can expand on it with the intention that you put in into the healing and how you work with the spiral, what energy you bring to it. Vogel crystals are about intent because they're programmable with all their facets. It's very important because you are a celestial programmer and you are a celestial teacher. So you're meant to teach this highest frequency of healing and technique because it's an ancient technique. It comes from 300,000 years ago. Mm. Tell me about the origin of it. So it came from the golden spiral of light when this universe was forming millions of years ago, the spiral of light came in and Mr. Vogel, as a celestial master, felt this frequency going back 300,000 years ago. And he took the golden spiral, but he made it into a white light. And he embodied that into the facets of those vocal crystals. Again, those vocals can be cut into many facets. 13 going up forwards and higher are the best facets, of course, because that, that golden fee light the golden spiral is already programmed into the 13 cuts of the facets. Then you add the white spiral and mix it in for the higher healing. This crystal I'm holding up is exactly 13. Yeah, so that's the minimum needed, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Okay, so, and it does go up to 20 something. Uh, I think facets, but is that really necessary? Do the facets magnify? What do the facets do? The facets magnify the frequency of the programming you put in in the spiral of white light. Again, the golden fee ratio is already programmed into the 13, but it is magnified the more facets there is. So it's good to start with 13. And I've always known the importance of breath. I always remind my clients about manifesting with breath. So would you say a little bit more about that? So breath work is important for grounding and balancing yourself. So you feel the most positive aspects of healing within the body, the most purest aspect. Breath work helps to create a steady flow of energy in the body. 
and feeling rejuvenized, a feeling, a fresh breath of air coming in and out. It's literally removing the toxins from your body with breath work. Because when you breathe, you get a flow of energy coming into the body and removing the toxins. You inhale in fresh breath and you exhale out the toxins. So that creates a detoxification and getting ready for that higher healing capacity with the vocals or any other healing method. You're cleansing yourself with the breath work. You're grounding and balancing yourself. You're also setting up a form of safety and comfort to be grounded. So you're not feeling overwhelmed by all the energies in your body and in the soul. That makes sense. I always associate uh, breath with spirit. Esperar, just, you know, bringing that in more. Now, a kind of technical question that occurred to me. Are you, me, in the eighth density activating and doing the work are you are you a slight separate fractal of our over self over soul whatever you want to say doing the work yes i am a fractal aspect of you because i embody a lot of your qualities a lot of your teachings a lot of your personality traits because we had done personality traits with source creator of who I am as part of you, and they're very similar to you. Those are private, of course, so we will not list them. But the teacher aspect, this is you and me highly connected together now in what you're bringing forward with your teachings, what you're guiding people to reach their highest mission and path in life, to empower them to learn their wisdom that they need to know to awaken to their highest degree. So you and I teach that together, me and the eighth, den eighth density where I am in my God creator world, and you're here on earth embodying that and teaching. Beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate all the help. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to get it through to us down here, is it? <laughs> Sometimes. Well, you are a strong creator being and you, you are a cosmic brilliance avatar a source creator has said so you are embodying the highest light and bringing that in for people to access through your healing through your teaching mm, thank you it's an honor and um what other tools uh can you assist me with uh, I think we mentioned tuning forks before the show, and I did buy a whole set of tuning forks because I know sound changes matter and all of that and the importance of that, but I haven't gotten around to studying that, and I always like to study enough to um, before doing that with clients, but that could be do long, done over long distance on a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yes, of course, because sound frequency reaches everything. It reaches within the vibration of the person's DNA codes, the light codes, and it rebalances and retunes what is out of balance and brings it into perfect alignment and balance. It can reprogram even the blueprint, the genetic blueprint codes. If something is feeling mutated and out of balance, those frequencies of sulfagios and Sulfagio is sacred, ancient, true purity of frequency that those tuning forks are tuned into. So if you learn the meanings of the Sulfagio, you will understand which tuning fork aligns with which organ, body part, chakra. And when you vibrate it, the person will feel it deeply and their physical, molecular, and biological structure starts to change in a positive light of balancing what was imbalanced to put it in a balanced field of a healthier state vibration. This is the true alternative healing. Instead of taking outside things that are created pharmacologically on your planet, this is alternative healing that is on a deeper vibrational level and is the healthiest to do. And it is a calling for you to step into that work, to empower people to step out of the pharmaceutical business and what that creates. And that often has side effects mm, that create its own things that humans don't really need anymore. 
you are now connecting to a higher healing through sound frequency, through sound healing, through crystalline healing. And your, your mission is to embody that and teach people how to work with those tools so they can have access to it as well. And you'll do it in your own comfort level as you're ready. And um, I, I've done chromotherapy for people in person, person color gels and all of that and set that up for people. But I, I'm looking for what I can reach more people one-on-one -on -one and what can be done. So even though these sounds are subtle, they are powerful. And so the computer microphone will pick that up and transmit that to them if they're in an open meditative state. Yes, of course. But they also have to want to receive the healing. So yeah. it's also about you teaching them how to open up to themselves and to trust. So once they you teach them that, and you always do, you explain how the body works, how the soul works. You do soul whispering to the body and the soul to connect them to their oh, yeah. highest aspects of themselves. I do body whispering. I love bodies. <laughs> well, you also do soul whisper. I do. <laughs> and that is the highest work of, of a soul healer to do that type of work. So with frequencies of the tuning forks, you will also teach them that, how to do the body whispering, how to do the soul whispering. And that is with the higher alignment of the tuning forks to feel the vibration comfortably coming into their body in that subtle sense and reaching all the cells, all the tissues, the organs to heal. Well, that is that is so beautiful and very powerful. And I, I'm sure part of it was we had to wait slowly for more people to be lifted up by this upgrade so that the sound can even penetrate, you know, more at a higher density to the light bodies of the people. So it's probably more appropriate that more and more of these kind of healings will resurface. I'm not going to say will surface, will resurface because we've used them all throughout time and space as primary forms of healing. Yeah. Oh, yes. As more light is coming in into your physical bodies in the soul divine monad, these sound healings and crystalline healings help to balance that light so you feel comfortable in your body, your soul receiving this light. And it doesn't cause disruptions in your vibrational field. Okay. Um, thank you so much. And I can see why one of my major archetypes I pick in multiple lives is, is a healer or doctor or something like that. And uh, it's wonderful to talk to the divine aspect of myself that has an expertise in that. Thank well, you. Well, you're you are most welcome. You are also a soul awakener. Your the way you teach is very forward thinking. It's very upfront. You're very honest with people what they're learning from you and what knowledge they're acquiring from you. And you're awakening their highest soul capacities. That is your greatest strength as a celestial wisdom teacher and cosmic brilliance avatar. Mm, thank you. That is what I'm the most motivated by. Just need to be a little bit more patient with that, I think. <laughs> well, it, it's your own journey of self-discovery because the, the work you do, you pride yourself in the healing work and the teaching work you do. And you do it on a subtle level that makes people feel comfortable with themselves. So it does not force them to step out of too much comfort zone. So you keep them safe and balanced within what they would love to learn from you. And playful. Yes, of course. The joy of play and beauty and healing, as always. Yes. So is there any other thing, Nanara? This is such a blessing for me. Thank you. It's just delightful that we may begin to converse more with the multidimensional aspects of ourselves. And uh, blessings to you and all you've done for humanity. And is there any last thing that you would like to share for humanity that you would feel useful for them at this time or that they should know? It is very important to allow people to be heard, to be understood. The art of listening 
and not interrupting is very important. You always appreciate when you're given the opportunity to speak your truth and wisdom and for others to listen and understand what you're teaching them. To take a moment out of time to sit together, to have a beautiful conversation where one listens and the other receives. And then when one finishes teaching, then to ask the questions without interruption, to have that equal balance of communication with each other, where equally it's balanced and both people are respected so that there is equal interaction, not one doing more or less with the other, that it's equal giving and receiving. To take that time to sit together, to listen to each other, to hear the wisdom being shared, spoken, and learned from one person, then to respond with questions or ideas and do that equal back and forth together in unity. That's very important for me to keep in mind. Very, very important. Thank you. As well as for others to, to have the time to listen, not judge, to be in neutrality and respect to both each other and others in whatever ways you do it and to understand each other, to learn about each other in positive ways that are helpful to both parties in soul growth learning. Now, may I ask you something a little of offshoot and you might have some input. Uh, as you know, one of my uh, dear guests, Apollomy Mendelian, uh, she has been very, very busy and she feels quite compelled to get out a two volume series that she sees as a scientific handbook for, for beginners and then onwards on the true galactic science used and to teach that before she goes off planet or anything else. Uh, I have volunteered, or well, she asked me and I volunteered to assist her with that, even though I've never written a book. Do you feel that that's an appropriate collaboration and uh, that that is indeed important to get out to people? Oh, of course it is going to teach people how to be comfortable and to be healed in their bodies and their souls, how to ground and balance with certain quantum mechanics that humans are not yet known for understanding. You and Apollomy will bring this forward in her knowledge. You, un you understand her as a specialized celestial being who came, who volunteered and came forward here to teach people of earth how to be their true selves and the light body and the physical body, how to embody both correctly in balance, to be in equal balance with all parts of themselves. So those books will help people to learn that knowledge and to be within their greatest empowered selves, to teach them energy, physical empowerment, to stand in their highest selves of who they are. Beautiful. And I, I feel we work really well together. I feel quite a collaboration with her. And as I've mentioned in my shows, I'm finding out that so many of whatever you want to call them, the movers and shakers, the ones that had the labels, the kings and queens of different realms, history, angelics, all of that, a lot of them have an avatar down on this planet, some of which I've been graced to meet. And is that because this is such a transition kind of end time and then a restart time that all of them are here to also uh, finish and balance out their own karma and contribute to all of that? What's your take on that? Exactly. As you've said, a lot of these avatars who've been queens, kings in past lives, avatars who are teachers reconnecting to each other it's not really the end times it's really just a new beginning of a new age end times is where you totally have to reset everything and start from scratch this is not what this is this is sort of the ending of all old systems stopping and new better ways of doing things coming online so it's not going to create any type of a chaotic issue it's not an apocalypse as some see it. It's just a 
ending of the old systems and a better frequency of light coming in to create the Aquarius, the Aquarius age, the age of light, the 1000 years of enlightenment, peace and beauty and healing on this planet without this more older aspect of the old ways of doing things, the apocalyptic ways of doing things. It's not going to go down, down that frequency. That is an old system that no longer serves at the highest light. I agree with that because I've been arrogant enough to say it's not going to happen on my watch <laughs> or that that we come from the future, you know, that where we're successful and we're going to transition this through, even though that hasn't been a very popular viewpoint, because I think so many people are experiencing uh, our you know, kind of the old programming, but also experiencing that they can't make sense of things because the the attachment to the old is disintegrating as it should. And so there's this this sense of a little bit of chaos for a lot of people. And so our focus needs to be to step forward in our truth and work in community to bring forward the truth that we know and carry from our other lifetimes and support yes. each other in that. Yes, but to do it in a positive light where you learn what you need to and understand, but not bring down others to keep it in a positive vibration in, in what you're doing and understanding, as well as there's this question many of you have about human players, non-human players, PCs. There's many different types of souls coming into the planet. Some have more higher soul capacities, some have less, and some don't have souls and run as cosmic programs within the bodies. And they're encyclopedias, walking and talking encyclopedias. But they bring an operational capacity to teach so others can learn from them. So they all have a purpose. The ones that aren't fully ensouled, they learn what it means to try to bring in a soul. To, to understand everything in creation, to experience that. And if somebody doesn't have a full soul or doesn't even have a soul, it's to understand they're still not empty. There's some kind of a program within them operating on a higher capacity to learn something, to balance karma, to balance wisdom, to bring something from others to learn from them as well. That's in, that's important. So it, not everyone in this particular game is set up bringing their celestial aspects here, right? There's a whole huge range here, correct? Yes. Some, some of them have forgotten what it embodies to bring in their full celestial being within a physical body. So they might bring a quarter of their soul, 25%, 5%, 10%. Whatever they can operate within this 3D body field, whatever they feel comfortable with, that's what they bring in when they decide to incarnate. Some embody, some can even bring that higher half of the celestial being later on when they start to understand who they are as a celestial creator being. Right. Which I think we all are re-remembering, -re or many of us are slowly re-remembering, yes. Um, you know, you brought up something, and I don't know if you feel this is your level of expertise. I'm sure you're able to explain. But there's been a lot of different guests. I've had a lot of confusion, a lot of seeking clarity, both from myself and others. When they call this a holographic experimental universe and game. So my question is, it also feels real. And I know the idea is holograms are supposed to feel real, but how do we balance those two aspects? Or can you can you explain that more for us? Yes, of course. So you are in a physical reality, a physical matrix of energetic existence that you're experiencing on various densities, 3D and up on this planet. But is it is also part of the holographic universe. Whichever universe you're in that you physically inhabit, you feel the holographic aspects of something else outside of yourself. Aspects of yourself, aspects of learning, teaching, creativity. You feel that in a 4D and, fire, and higher density. So you see it without any limits in front of yourself. 
And sometimes you choose to interact with that holographic aspect because your body is energy. It's crystalline and diamond energy, and it's also water and physicality. That's the physical aspect. The holographic aspect is the energy of everything that you are in creation, and you can interact with it. And it gives you your creativity. It gives you your inspiration. It gives you your manifestation of creating with energy to the physical aspect of what you want to create and manifest. You are creators of the highest variety on your holographic aspect, bringing that into the physicality game of what you're playing with. That is so important to differentiate because the tendency we have down here is to polarize. Well, is it holographic or is it real or is it this or is it that? And it's actually both. <laughs> yes, it's a combination of both. And connecting to your higher, highest self, highest divine state, intuitive state, it's energetic and it's physical together, integrating every aspect of the soul parts and working together. Mm. And slowly becoming more aware of that. Yes. And yes. The timing of that is up to people's intent, desire, and what they agree to do in this lifetime. Yes. And what they're ready to experience at this time, what their comfort zone is. And your way of teaching is to be in your comfort zone, but to also step out a little bit outside of it to understand your highest self yeah. on the levels you're meant to. Definitely. Okay, um, there's another side question here, which is somewhat related to understanding that it's a holographic universe that we're in, but also that it is real, is how does one differentiate, especially for people who've been in programs, different things, and almost everyone has been programmed here by culture and society, and genetics and all kinds of things. How does one differentiate between a real memory and one that has been in the soldier world constructed for them or a false memory or an ego memory, so to speak, you know? And there's also the holographic simulation aspect of somebody has been put in a holographic simulation of experiencing something that is also connected. So let's start with the implanted memories, the feeling of false memories, something that's very real. You feel it to the utmost capacity. You get to touch it, you get to feel it, you're in it, you're walking in it, you're experiencing it to its utmost capacity of reality, where it could feel gut-wrenching, you feel everything. Those are the real memories, those are the real experiences where you're fully interacting with whatever you're in, you feel the good, you feel everything part of those experiences, and you deeply connect to those experiences. That is the real aspect to its fullest degree of whatever you went through. The trauma, the pain, the positive, the not so positive, everything is part of that experience to its deepest level and you connect to it. You, you literally almost vibrate at that experience because you've lived it to its fullest degree. And also, if it can be verifiable, if somebody else has said something, well, I was in this, this, and this, and, and they have disclosed the most detailed knowledge and your experience coincides with that so some something was created you know something was physically there and one person disclosed it and somebody else disclosed it and it fits together in, in the detail as truth then that's a real experience oftentimes implanted memories is something that is more than it seems it's too much it, it, it's it's a story created upon a story. It gets out of hand. It's beyond the realm of beyond the realm of being believed. It, it's like going outwards every day and saving something, doing something, being the hero, being the savior. Every day you're a hero and a savior. Every day something is created that is beyond belief. Exaggeration. Those are often implanted memories where it's too much. 
beyond belief. Every day the story changes. The, the experience is not consistent. It changes, it changes, it changes, bigger, bigger, bigger. So that is often implanted memories or exaggerated experiences, or it is sort of not true in its experience. It's too much. So that could be implanted memories, that could be fake memories, and also not, just not vibrating to that experience. It's, it's, it doesn't feel right to you. That could be a fake memory. It just feels wrong, it doesn't vibrate, it doesn't resonate with what that experience was. It just doesn't feel fine-tuned to what you believe is your truth. That often is fake and untrue memories or implanted memories. There's the holographic aspect as well, being put in a simulation where you feel that it's so real, but you interact with it every day. You're living that frequency and vibration and that experience every day. And you're talking about it every day over and over and over again with some elements added in. <laughs> that can often be a simulation. You, you're literally put in a holographic state of reality where it feels so real to you, you don't want to leave that place and you want to publicly report about it and talk to people about it and share it with everyone so they know what it is and what it means to you. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a combination between an Irish storyteller <laughs> Um, uh, SSP, because I know the SSPs often train in holographic training rooms that are very realistic and they don't always di can differentiate, right? So, so is the first one that you say is the most valid, will you always have cellular memory reaction to that? Yes, you will always have a gut reaction to want to understand that experience, to explore it, to, to, to understand why it happened to you. How can it be real? And if other people are corroborating those experiences through something that happened to them that corroborates that, it is very much real. There's something going on in your world that is very much real that's being exposed right now. And, and many people have come out and talked about it and shared similar experiences from these SSPs. It happens there. It happens on the ground you walk on beneath. I think we all, you all know what that is. We're not going to say, you know, what it is too much. Everybody understands what it is. But um, a lot of people have corroborated seeing what goes on and how it impacts human life. The sovereignty of freedom and free will to not be taken or removed for, from where you shouldn't be, to live your lives freely. Many have come out with pieces of the puzzle for what that means yes. to have total freedom and not be taken out of body out of soul to not be displaced to exist in your reality to exist in your realities in freedom so earth earth destiny is to allow for sovereign free beings working in unification with each other and stop the stop the fighting and the ridiculousness of it all and also stop believing the old programs <laughs> yes programs. yes and, and allowing people to choose their own destinies and opportunities and not to create blockages or barriers or limitations and not to take people out of whatever they're supposed to be in to experience to have total freedom to be yourselves okay that is that is very clarifying because these are questions I had in the background for a long time. And I'm so, so uh, appreciative that you were able to give clarity to that. And may we have more chats like this. And thank you so, so much, Ninara, for that. Mm -hmm. And just one more thing, that gut reaction of feeling your truth of your reality of something being real that you experience, whether on planet, off world, and, and often wanting to explore it to its highest degree of what it is for your understanding to be balanced as a soul, that gut feeling, trust it, listen to it, explore it, and understand it. Then you learn your truth and your true reality. 
and what's happened to you and why. Really important point, because I have found that bodies have an innate intelligence, an innate, you know, intelligence. So to listen to, to listen to that, mm -hmm. <laughs> as, uh, as most animals do, most animals have this innate intelligence too. So <clears throat> often the weirdest truth and what you really truly experienced is the real truth no matter what it looks like or sounds like, as long as it's not overinflated, as long as it's not overcreated and built out and, you know, it's, it needs to be consistent as a truth. And also like when you told me that Nanara was here and you sent me a picture, not only do we look alike, but my websites have always had golden lions on them and, you know, the light and all of that. So when we have subtle bleed throughs in this current life, when we hear something, we can always run it through. Like, is there any part of me that is already living that a little bit already that would make it more believable than what you know, <laughs> kind of thing? Well, yes. Confirmation, verification of soul connection. Does, does that truly connect to who you are and what you're doing? It, or does it not connect to you? And if it does not connect, that is okay. Perhaps that is not your experience of what, what came through and to study that and understand fully too. But when you truly connect, you get that verification of similar experiences, the, the personalities, the connection, that true connection of what you just said, it vibrated with you as your truth of who you are as a unique being. And the aspect that I am of you, it vibrates as truth to you. Therefore, it is part of our personalities and uniqueness connection of who we are as parts of the Oversoul together. And I remember one of the first things that was given to me is the meaning of your name, which is optimistic, cheerful, and peacemaker. So um I resonate definitely to optimistic and cheerful. Sometimes I'm a little bit of a brat, but otherwise <laughs> I like to create diplomacy between all species and all beings. So, yes. And you teach it wisely as well. You are a diplomat in your own right. Thank you so, so, so much. And uh, I will, with all the love, ask you to withdraw and uh thank you for honoring the healing archetypes which i've been in a lot of lives and now i'm going to bring through the warrior archetype that um that i would like to talk to so thank you nanara it's been a pleasure to connect with you Lee, and i thank you for allowing me to bring in the wisdom for you and others as we've connected today in a blessed beautiful way thank you mm. <laughs> mm. okay so for this next part we'll do it telepathically because again Amar amaris does not channel amiris amiris does not channel she talks telepathically so with amiris it will be through telepathic connection and us having a conversation through eliana wonderful do you need some water or anything no, I just, just, uh, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay. So, um, what you offered to bring forward is, uh, Amiris, who is a higher dimensional aspect of myself. And when you were telling me a little bit about her, it totally, matched what I had been told by several other different psychics and so it just was beautiful and you were kind enough also you and source creator to send me um, a picture which we may or may not show you know show Nanara on on the show because I also want to make everything that we're sharing with today relatable to other people it's not you know just highlighting me but um what I had been told by many psychics is that uh, I was a leader or I don't know, does it still go on in real time? 
the warrior archetype of Amiris in you is very interconnected because you're about bringing the light forward and she is the light incarnate in you. She is the warrior in you to bring the truth forward, to bring the light forward, to teach people to be at their highest self, to, to enable people to be helped, to be their best self. This is what you do through her. She does that through you, the warrior connection and the healer. It's a balance, the warrior and the healer archetype. Because of her, you are both. The warrior king and the wise queen. Yes, exactly. Divinity. Yes. Uh, so I, I I was told, and and Amiris is here. Thank you so much for being here, my love. And uh, that you, I, were a leader of the female humanoid warriors fighting on Earth on behalf of Archangel Michael to remove. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell what we were doing at that time? Yes, we were removing the giants, the hybridized creations that weren't supposed to be walking on Earth. And we were also clearing the imbalance from the Garden of Eden, the fallen angelics that weren't supposed to be on Earth. They weren't supposed to be walking around interconnecting with humans, intermixing and creating other beings. Of, of not so angelic line on the earth. So this was during the time of the Garden of Eden. And this was also after the fall, fall of Atlantis. It was like 100,000 years ago. So it was to clear out these giants, to clear out the fallen angelics so they could not influence humans towards darkness. It was to create positive light. It was to create a light balance where humans are not taken over or preyed upon by beings that shouldn't walk the earth as experiments. Okay, so we were part of Mike, leader in Michael's legions. Yes, yes. Archangel Michael is a very big warrior energy being in physicality. He has wings. He actually has wings. You did not have wings. You had this energy, this golden spiral energy around you and a blue energy intermixing that was around your body that was your aura of light so that is like wings but without wings because you to come down to earth you embodied a human-like frequency of humanoid because you were about five foot nine six foot so you were in Angels can be 10 feet or higher. You were in a five foot nine, six foot body with along your 40 other brethren of your female warriors because you came down as a group. You worked together. You had these light swords. We can call them light swords that had energy and you wore these armor. You had platinum armor and you had gold armor with these protective sigils or energetic drawings on the armor that protected you. And, and, and it also was energy frequency that you would activate with your abilities. And it would literally make the armor invisible and make you invisible. So humans wouldn't see that you were doing the work you needed on this planet. So the humans were kept safe. So it was like a holographic suit in a certain way that that some many are forced to wear here a holographic projection. It it was a physical suit that created holographic projection of you wearing clothing, so nobody would okay. see that suit and it could make you invisible. So even though I had all the all all the armor on, uh, it was I could just do the normal human thing. Yes, you could, and the armor wasn't heavy. It had a lot of energetic frequency to it, so you can easily move around and you were not wearing a helmet. You were wearing a circlet because you don't like your face covered with heavy things. Uh -oh. um, you need ease of breathing, ease of easy moving. And this, this armor, it was celestial armor in physical form. So it allowed you to do things of superhuman abilities, yet blend in in the human world capacity. And this this work you did for about 10 years on this planet. 
but that was like a million point two over there, right? It's like a long time over there, right? Yes, it's a long time. Well, time moves differently in the angelic realms. So to them, that was like 1.2 million years ago here. It was 100,000 years ago or 300,000 years ago when you were here. Okay. Uh, and of course, giants have been here. There's evidence of giants for a long time. They're not walking here now. Well, there are some, but they're not like the giants that you removed. They're not that big. Well, and also I honor all species as long as they don't, um, as long as they're respectful to other beings on the planet. And I want to make that clear because not all giants are bad. And No, no. All, uh, some of the old, oldest and celestial species are giants in yes. some ways. So um, this was an issue where they were severely harming the human race, correct? And yes. they were also the fallen angels were also had bred with some of, is this the time where they had bred with some of the humans and that yes. was causing all kinds of other issues? Yes, it was causing some of them to be chimeras. You don't want 30 foot giant walking around, stepping on humans or eating humans. Yeah. Or taking over their places where they live. So it's, it, this was a cleanup project to clean that up. Because humans needed balance and harmony. And honestly, seeing these giants was scary. It could create a heart attack, literally. It could create an adrenal overspike and literally destroy the nervous system. Just seeing these beings tromping around. And hearing their voice and everything. Yeah. Yes, it was a vibration that was like a roar, even when they would say something. So they weren't aligned with the frequency of Earth to support them being here. So it was a cleanup project. So um, the other 40 female warriors in the group, were they all combinations of seraphim, archangels, different species, all fighting together? Did we come together? But we all obviously had to take vows with Michael, you know, kind of to follow certain things, right? You were definitely of various lineages, some seraphim, some other uh, Elohim too, or a theme. So definitely lineages of different types of angelic-like beings who could come down on earth from the higher density, higher dimension to earth and embody what earth frequency was to do the work you did. And just to clarify, you did fight the giants, but you didn't kill giants. You transported giants to a holding stasis place. Oh, good. That makes me feel better. Where they could be rehabilitated because you took a vow and an oath not to kill anybody. Yep. Even though you had that's to transport. A, that's a Michael oath. <laughs> that's a Michael oath. And you had come out of a golden portal with your 40 ladies, warrior ladies of Michael. Um and you were to do the cleanup as peacefully as you could. So that meant teleporting the giants and the fallen angelics out of the earth realm system to a sixth dimension, not to the angelic realm, the seventh and up, but to a sixth dimension of healing and rehabilitation. Was, that done, was that done just synchronistically or not using golden portals for portaling at all golden yes. uh, pillars for port portaling um you've always worked with the golden pillars of the portals that was your ability to open those types of portals on earth that's the type of portal you came through and that's the type of you actually opened up blue portals to portal these giants and the fallen angelics to the healing place of the sixth density for rehab where they could have their soul looked at and rebalanced with i've always known that there are ways of putting more light into a soul mm -hmm. uh, if they got too dark but i'm mm -hmm. sure there's a lot of laws around it but it just when people you know would ask me oh that person's so evil i said there, there's always a way you don't have to disintegrate them and put them back to source immediately there's always a way of adding some light and giving them another chance but that's strict rules too there's a lot of rules to that 
Yes, and when they came here to Earth, these giants and the fallen angelics had distorted their higher vibration when they were on Earth for too long and stuck around, chose to stick around and interact with humans. It lowered their vibrational frequency. So they needed that rehabilitation to reach that higher frequency again and to wake up and know who they truly are as celestial beings, to be given a chance to rehab in that way. That was part of your work. Okay, that makes sense. That may that makes sense to me. Um, because the lust thing, when you're when you're down on a planet, and even though many of the fallen angels probably had good intentions at first, they eventually had families down here, mm -hmm. and and so they didn't want to leave that obviously. But also the lust thing, falling in love with the humans and all of that kind of thing. Now, I'm not against hybridization at all, but this was too much, creating too many problems too soon, according to the council laws, right? Yes, and it was creating way too many hybridized species all at once. The planetary ecosystem and the humans could not afford to experience that on that level. When, when you're still learning who you are as living beings, you're, you need to be given the chance to learn that without the extra coming online without the great teachers coming in <laughs> you know to help you out but then they also get worshipped a little bit you know? yes to avoid the worship complex issue humans need to understand who they are on their highest sovereign levels without other beings overpopulating them over overwhelming them energetically and physically mm -hmm. and imagine if you're bigger as giants than these fallen angels you're huge and you have energetic ability to match your frequency to meet with human women. Oh yeah, and shape shift and do all yes, that. and human men to 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 connect. It's not all physical copulation; it's also energetic connection to make it compatible and to make it work to create different hybridized species physically. They would energetically mm, lower themselves to the height appropriate to interact physically then they go back to their own height once everything is completed and this is creating the nephilim group yes 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 so they had they could change their molecular and biological states as shapeshifters can but they would still look the same as they do just can make themselves smaller or larger to make it compatible with humans and how long did our fallen brethren um, were down on earth during, you know, where they started lowering their frequency and, and planning on staying there? <laughs> Almost 20,000 years, which was longer than, whoa, they weren't supposed to be here even for 10 or 20 years, much less 20,000 years. Whoa. Okay, so it wasn't like, oh, five years, we got to go down and help this. It was like, we've given them enough chance. And I'm sure we've come and talked to them and they said, no way, we have family down here, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, they, form, they formed too many attachments already. They were enmeshed in human life and they were experiencing things on a physical level, an energetic level that in heaven, it's different. So- and when you came down, you knew your mission of 10 years to clean it up and leave and not to stay on earth. Mm -hmm. You had no intention to stay on earth. You followed the law of one of non-interference, the mm -hmm. clause. You followed that. Mm -hmm. you, you did your mission, you cleaned it up and you left. And you left no evidence that you were even here. Mm hmm and that's and did the forty warriors the the thirty nine other females all survive? They were they were yeah. They all left with you once the mission was completed. Those armors were your protection, survival tools with the swords and the shields because you had a you had this shield with a chalice on it with this beautiful blue chalice, and your platinum armor also had the chalice in the middle, the heart and the chalice that protective blue energy mm, emblem, if you will, it protected you because you literally could energetically shoot energy out. Do all the hands. stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes, you had that ability. 
uh, and that protected you and helped you to accomplish your mission. Mm -hmm. So Emrys, thank you for that clarity. And, and I love that we did portal them out and uh, tried to rehabilitate them. Did we have much luck rehabilitating some? Most of them were rehabilitated. Some were stuck in that blockage of wanting to be on earth. So it took longer for them, especially the fallen angels. The giants were less attached to that than the fallen angelics. And the fall Go ahead, I'm sorry. The, the fallen angelics were more attached to human life than the giants. The giants lived in their own colonies. So were we able to redistribute the giants to continue on some other location other than Earth? Yes, they went to other planets 4D and higher that best suited their environments where things are bigger than on Earth. So they were redistributed. The angelics, mm, they created more of celestial worlds for themselves to go into because they understood what they were as celestial beings and still wanted to experience celestiality. Some created physical worlds from 60 and higher because again, they wanted some physicality, but most of them went back to celestial realms because they understood what going back to energy means and, and sort of doing reparation. In different ways. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that was very uh, compassionate and, and very fascinating because people always gave me swords my whole life. They just would be like bringing the presence of swords, you know. Well, these light swords that you had, they weren't as human weapons are. They don't work that way. They work on an energetic frequency level with your abilities. So it's not the same thing. Right. These light swords, celestial swords and shields, they were your protection, but they weren't weapons of, oh, of, I got of it. typical ways of weapons that kill beings. They they weren't to kill, they were to protect. Yes. Yes. Or stun or Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's an energetic frequency not to kill, to stun, to incapacitate with humane ways where the being does not die. It's not killed. So Emrys, what's your viewpoint on, you know, is every human also an angelic, also has had angelic, or is there just huge diversity where they source from what they experience? There's a huge diversity of where souls come from, galactic lineages of extraterrestrials, humanoids, earth beings, um, some angelic, some not. It's it's a plethora of lineages. Some are Tuatha Danon, which is a bit of fairy and a bit of elven together. Oh, you're bringing in some interesting things, yes. <laughs> well, we did have this conversation yesterday. Yes. Yes. Um, and I said, I'm 5% Tuatha Danon. And I said, fairy. And you said it's elven, it's a bit of both because they commingled and interacted with each yes. other. Yes. In their realms. And yes. they brought it to humanity as well because some of them were on earth at one point. They physically manifested, then went back into their realms once the environment was rebalanced after what happened in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Some of them chose to come down and rebalance the physical environment, the air, the water, to realign. And guardians also came down, the creator beings from their celestial worlds, the god worlds, and rebalanced Earth. It's, it had been really a mess for a while, hadn't it? Yes. Well, it's it's creating a balance again where humans can walk the Earth in safety. Mm -hmm. And that had to be all retuned. And, and there had been several resets where humans were wiped out and recreated and receded and we're not going that way again because you have the right to live and exist and learn your life lessons right and, and finish your missions on earth so it's not happening this time and back then the memory was wiped yes the memories were wiped there's more star seeds being born kids 
where they were, they know who they are as angelics, as galactics, and they come in with that knowing already. And humans are activating and knowing who they are in their past lives or reconnecting with their avatars like you with Nanara and me. And knowing your soul names is important to pronounce your names correctly because it's an energetic frequency. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know. I don't like it when people call me Mary Lee. I like Merrily, you know, so I'm sure you're just as strict. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amaris, is that how, the correct pronunciation? Amaris. Oh, it's almost like an A then rather than an I. Well, it's both. Amaris. Amaris. Well, that makes more sense to me. Amaris. Mm -hmm. Amaris. And yes. someone called me Aremus. I am definitely, <laughs> well, I had a conversation with you that their actual Star Trek is actual beings from Star Trek, that it's real in the world. Um, the the Vulcans, the Romulans, the Remians. So it's, it's, it's the name that vibrates correctly to the frequency of the being. If you pronounce the name wrong, you're, you're actually connecting to the wrong being on some aspect of reality. Absolutely. So the name frequency is important. And the soul because, frequency. Yeah. And the soul frequency, yes. And and the personality traits of Nanara and Amir, Amar, Amiris, Samaris, was done to understand who you're connecting to, that it's the true you connections. Yeah, what you wrote me is so similar. Yeah. To mm -hmm. that. Because this is the frequency of you, and this is the frequency of who you're meant to connect with and understand your highest aspects. Well, Amaris, how, well, first of all, what are you, you know, in now time in ever present now time, are you still a warrior with Michael? Have you branched off done other things? Are you all of it? What are, what is my aspect of you being you doing? I exist in a golden field. I don't exist physically. This is why you're not channeling me. Like Nanara exists in a physical aspect where she's able to connect with humans and port and teleport and use portals to connect to humans and take them to different places and then go back to her eighth density as the celestial being because she lives in a God world. I don't live on God worlds. I exist as pure golden frequency in the universe. Mm. Is there any special density or dimension that we would call that or not really? It is a sixth, seventh density if you want to give it a density frequency. I work with more with Source Creator on the laws of universal creation now. I don't embody physicality anymore. Um, I'm... I'm aware of the angelic realms and what Archangel Michael does, but I don't involve myself in those aspects mm -hmm. because I am of still of the angelic frequency, but don't embody the angelic world. I am, don't exist on angelic worlds anymore mm -hmm. as I did before. Do genetics apply to you at all when you're, when you're everything in golden like, like your 5% uh, you know, Fit. This is what I was before, 5% Elven faith. Before. Now um, it's like there's no limitation, no labeling. You exist in the golden frequency. Exactly. Yes. So that 5% when I was in your physical body form of what you understand as you, as Amaris, then. Okay. All right. And I just have a question because I'm, I'm, did we ever lose a battle? It depends on your interpretation. There's never any loss of battles. There's only of experience gained in what you learned because there's no losers in battles. Okay. I I prefer to see it that way, but I had some psychics who just said you rarely lost. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they said, you'll find out. So, so I, I don't look at it like, because any kind of, to me, it's like, if you have to battle, what's the best outcome with the most respect that can come forth from that? Exactly. 
there are no losers in the battles that you had 100,000 years ago and 300,000 300, years. There was only rehabilitation and saving the humans, rehabilitating, rehabilitating the giants, sending them where they need to go for healing, sending the fallen angelics where they need to go, and helping the humans to live balanced lives here on Earth and to leave them to their natural evolution without all the other beings running around on Earth. Right. Or over-worshipping everybody. <laughs> yes, because the godlike beings from the god worlds, you think of them as magic, as magic creators, and that magic is everything. Well, it is not. It is just energetic abilities. That is what magic is called. There's different frequencies of magic and energy, um, but it is ability. It is mostly psionic ability that is perceived as magic, something extra special. Yes, it's just higher science. Yes, 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 exactly. And that's what humans worshipped back then, which wasn't right. healthy. No. Uh, they still tend to do that, but we'll we'll move along. Um, so Amar is just uh, to finish up a couple things. What would how am I utilizing your golden field and your abilities in this lifetime? And what would you recommend for me to focus on for the benefit of all? You are the golden field. You live and embody the golden field already fully. This is why nothing interferes with you. Nothing touches you and you don't connect to anything that you shouldn't because that golden field is already in you and doing that work for you. So you don't have to constantly touch it up, retouch, retouch. You're fully activated in it, living it, embodying it. You just need to connect to your higher knowledge and express your highest form of what you're meant to do, what you've been shown as the future you with walking into the other healing arts that you already are interested in, inspired by, and want to further enact those mm -hmm. as a human experience because you have a healing space that you've created on earth that you're very comfortable with but you are thinking of expanding that out to other experiences what we've already discussed with nanara so embodying more of that stepping into your highest courage and going forward with those beautiful healing experiments and fine-tuning them to your golden energy frequency of how you work with this golden spiral. Okay. That explains why I've always felt I'm at like max, you know, like 10% of my capacity, just intuitively. I didn't know what that was. And um, any other, any other thing you would like people to know about the golden light, the golden spiral that are parts of you? and your wisdom well everybody is in their own unique spiral and it might be not just a golden frequency it might be other frequencies of energy Silver, that... rainbow yes oh. exactly exactly to everybody it's a unique one the universe does function on the golden spiral of the fee our known universe does and others do and we are now part of the multiverse, so we can connect to other universes through these more stable portals of the five path star of your universal upgrade and reset. There's more higher light coming in for protection and to not have anything not of the highest light being here in this sphere of this universe. So this is the update that things are being cleared and worked on. Or to have a higher balance of light and balance on the planet, not to have your unique evolution being disrupted by energies and beings that aren't supposed to be here. So this work is being redone again. Oh yes, we're we're we are successfully clearing and cleaning, but it's not done yet. It's being done on a higher frequency now. It's more noticeable of how things are changing faster because. Yes. Time has sp been sped up on your universe and your world. Things are progressing more quickly, so you're going to see results more quickly of what's happening and coming forward. So that is very important with this reset and upgrade that happened with the Schumann Resonance. 
So people are feeling things at a higher frequency, at a higher level. They're connecting to the universe and interacting with it at a higher detail of, of the ultimate expression. They're hypersensitive. They're more attuned with their surroundings and more aware of what's going on within them, around them, and everybody else interconnecting. Hyper-awareness, vigilance, connection, soul expression, creativity, manifestation, that is happening much faster now because of all these upgrades and resets and changes that the pillars of light have brought in, that source creator have brought in and the other celestial beings and creators. And th any, thank you so, so much. I have one more question is, will that upgrade continue to happen? And are we destined to stabilize at a certain like fifth density or fourth density or high fourth or, or is there no cap on it? I mean, I'm wondering if there's a cap on it. For this. There's no cap on it. And it's what humans are also ready for. It'll continue to evolve on that rate. The planet is in 5D and wanting to go higher at a faster rate. So that's the planet's desire, Earth. Humans are definitely stepping in into 4D more aspect and learning about 5D, what it means to step into that, to go beyond okay. 3 and 3.5D. But it's much more awareness without fear, awareness without fear. And it's an energetic alignment within the body. So things are shifting in your bodies, crystalline and diamond frequencies coming online. So you literally feel those changes, some more in energetic, creative ways, some more in confused ways and needing to align to it and balance and ground each at their own pace. But things are speeding up. So everybody's feeling this hypervigilantly that there's a change that something happened unique and this is also i know this is important on my part to remember is anything that i'm feeling then like judgment that can happen to me or frustration that can happen to me what i need to remember for myself is to quickly clear that out of my own energy field and my cells correct yes and everybody should too they should sit down within themselves and and see what's going on internally, externally, what is happening, why, where, when, how, to clear that, to understand it, so you don't hold extra karma, extra energy you don't need anymore, extra density that you can release and be at your lightest frequency for your well-being healing. And you do that through intent and visualization and breath and and starting over again right because that's how how you can create karma with those unfinished nitty mm -hmm. judgment things right yes how you can untangle your karma so you don't create more karma yeah of course yes well said. and that's sitting within the pillar of light you sitting within it standing within it whatever is comfortable for you and working on it ah well that takes us full circle pun intended <laughs> Oh, the circle of life always compute, continues in beautiful healing ways. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amaris. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, it was a great visit. Love you very much, of course. <laughs> and thank you for the blessings you're doing and how you're helping all of creation. And thank you. Um, are there any other questions that you have? I'm, I'm trying to think here. Um, you know, at this time, we've we've gone two hours, and I think we've covered a lot of things. So maybe at another time, but let's leave it at at this uh, time frame so that people won't become so overwhelmed if we make this public. How's that sound? Beautiful. And um, final words of wisdom: respect yourself, respect others, respect each other. And, and work with yourself for your highest good, well-being, and healing. Mm. Thank you so much, Amaris. Thank you. And Take continue care. continue to shine your beautiful light and wisdom and teaching, dear friend. Thank you. You too. Blessed be. Thank you. And I'd like to thank El Ileana. Thank you so much. It for, was for being such a 
a seamless and transmitter of multiple frequencies and for um, initiating this. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure to connect to all these beautiful, lovely celestial beings. And I thank Source Creator as well for helping us out with this. Yes. Yes, he was working with us Absolutely. too. I was going to ask, does Source Creator have any last thing or anything to add? Um, work together in unity and harmony. Um, feel compassion for others. Have understanding of others. And, and work together to bring unity, harmony, peace, and love to this beautiful world in the universe. Aye, aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> be in balance and harmony. Be in joy, being, being your creative self and your highest intuitive self as well. Em embody your highest vibration, your highest love, your highest connection, connecting to your missions in life and life purposes and discover who you are and what you want to be. And don't let other people's judgments stop you. Mm -hmm. Allow them to have their own opinions and judgments and just forge ahead. Yes. And, and letting go of judgments, releasing that from the soul field and the physicality. So you are not in judgment. You are not an ego. You are in your true balanced self, whoever you're meant to be. Sounds good to me. <laughs> me too. Beautiful. Thank well, you so much. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.